Christians are often tempted to feel squeamish, somewhat embarrassed about Old Testament passages where God commands the complete destruction of cities. All the men, all the women, even all the children. But this is often because we have imbibed a sentimentalism that's not really Christian. And it has had disastrous effects on the church. The central point that must be driven into our hearts is the supreme holiness and righteousness of God. When God commanded the complete annihilation of people in the Old Testament, we are required to say, Amen. He is God and we are not. He is Lord and we are not. He knows all things, he made all things, he kills and he makes alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sentimentalism is actually a deeply resentful and rebellious heart that masquerades as pity and mercy. It resents God's holiness and justice in crushing the wicked. And it reserves the right to stand in judgment over God's commands. It says, I'll do most anything that seems reasonable that God commands. But there's a thought lurking in the shadows of that rebellious heart that says, but be careful, don't be too extreme, don't be too fanatical with religion, because then you might end up doing something crazy. But this is fundamentally rebellious. Is God God or not? Is he the Lord or not? Is he holy and just and good or not? To reserve some room in your heart for judgment is to say that God cannot be completely trusted and that you think your judgment or the consensus of modernity can be trusted. All of this has had disastrous effects on our view of scripture. It's, has, it's had disastrous effects on the necessity of obedience, but it has been perhaps most harmful in our reluctance to kill our own sin. When there was sin in the camp, the Lord told Joshua, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Joshua 7 verse 13. And it wasn't until Israel had stoned Achan and his sons and his daughters and then burned them with fire that the curse was destroyed and they could defeat their enemies. Why are there so many professing believers in this land with such little comparative impact? Why does God not give us leadership and victory? The answer is here. Our camps are filled with sins that we refuse to utterly destroy. We refuse to stone them and then burn them with fire. And so we cannot have God's blessing. We cannot stand before our enemies. We refuse to destroy that lust, that wrath, that envy, and so we cannot stand.